What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today I am excited to finally share my thoughts on the brand new Anycubic Cobra 3 Max Combo, which I've taken to calling Ajax in my shop. Long story short, I am a big ancient history buff, so all my printers get names from ancient Greek and Roman mythology. And if you know anything about the hero Ajax, he was a mountain of a man towering over all his fellow warriors. And well, that's fitting for the largest printer in my fleet. Now, Ajax, um, well, he also went a little mad in the end. And this printer is certainly not without its own maddening qualities. So stay tuned. Let's dive in. So right off the bat, I am upgrading from the previous generation Cobra 2 Max. The world of extra large FDM printing is a fun one, but the technology in these bad boys has been a bit lacking when you consider the better core XY machines that have been dominating the market and the 3D printer popularity contest. Truth be told, not everyone needs a giant printer like this, so how will you know if you do? Well. It's a personal choice. For me, I wanted to be able to print the largest one-shot cosplay pieces like large Batman cowls, torso armor, and more. And as an Etsy shop owner, it also became important for me to have the ability to maximize my print efficiency through the use of larger build volumes. Before recent larger format printers like the Creality K2 Plus and the newest Bamboo H2D hit the market, this was the direction that you had to turn to upgrade your build volume printers like the Anycubic Cobra 2 Max or Elegoo's Neptune series. For me, my previous Cobra 2 Max specialized in printing all the single color parts for larger masks like the Venom helmet from Yosh Studios. I could print the entire helmet in a single build plate and only have to worry about printing the teeth and the eyes elsewhere since those were either different colors or multicolored prints. Still, jobs on the Cobra 2 Max were limited to single color. So you can imagine my excitement when Anycubic announced that their Cobra 3 Max would make use of their Ace Pro multicolor system. Now, I pre-ordered my unit on day one under early bird pricing. It was originally slated to hit my doorstep in February, but it didn't actually get to me until March. And what's more is that there was very little to no communication from any cubic along the way. The printer and the Ace Pro unit just sort of showed up one day. And I know that many waited and perhaps are even still waiting longer than I did for their initial pre-ordered unit. It seems like this sort of fulfillment logistics nightmare is becoming ever more prevalent with the 3D printing companies. So uh, just as an aside, here's to hoping that it becomes more of a priority to excel at customer service and delivery in the future. All right, let's talk specs. The Cobra 3 Max combo retails for $9.99, although you can find it on Anycubic's website right now for just $7.19. And that's a killer of a price tag for what you're getting because it's not only the printer, but the Ace Pro unit as well. The printer features a massive 420 by 420 by 500 print volume, which dwarfs even the size of my K2 Plus and H2D build plates when compared side by side. Through the Ace Pro, the Cobra 3 Max supports printing up to eight colors and the technology improves upon the experience of the Cobra 2 Max in a number of ways. Anycubic is using their new LeviQ 3.0 auto leveling and Z offset technology. Auto leveling was perhaps my biggest gripe with my Cobra 2 Max. The LeviQ system on that printer relied on making sure that sensors were the right height on the rear of the printer, which was just a science that was near impossible to measure. And it also required random 3D printed keys in order to determine the perfect Z offset. The whole process felt antiquated when comparing to modern auto leveling functionality on the market. But with LeviQ 3.0, the experience is much more akin to what you'd expect in a 3D printer these days. The printer runs itself through a series of touch points across the bed and uses this data to determine your bed mesh and auto your Z offset. The Cobra 3 Max also features an anti-skip semi-automatic belt tensioning system, which helps to further alleviate a manual science that was all too prevalent in the former models. Dual Y-axis motors also enhance the stability of this directional movement, which aims to reduce the occurrence of step loss 
and layer misalignment. The printer boasts a maximum print speed of 600 millimeters per second, although recommends uh, something closer to a speed of 300 millimeters per second for your prints. The hot end is also upgraded over the previous model to include a quick release nozzle. We should also mention the Ace Pro unit here, as this is arguably the star of the show, enabling this printer to create those multicolor prints. Of all the multicolor systems out there, Anycubic is eager to position themselves as the one to beat. Their unit features a built-in dryer and heater, which unlike similar models on the market, even the newest AMS2 Pro, these features can be active while printing. Now in terms of setup, Anycubic has tried to make this as easy as possible for a printer of this size. The gantry comes separated from the base, allowing the footprint of the box to be smaller. And when it comes to setting up printers, for me, I always tend to go straight for the official YouTube video for unboxing and setup. It's just easier than trying to flip through paper pages and make sense of those. And to Anycubic's credit, they do have videos prepared for setting up both the base Cobra 3 Max and the combo version. From a steps perspective, it's all pretty straightforward. However, any Cubix tutorial videos are lacking in incredibly important details that sabotaged my first print experience. First, any Cubix video assumes that your hot end already has the four-way splitter installed on top of it, and that wasn't the case for me. I had to catch that and switch it out. Their video also makes no reference to the fact that the cutter is not pre-installed on the hot end, and this was a dire oversight in my case because I set the whole thing up, started some prints, only to get consistent clogging errors right off the bat. I was pulling my hair out. I had no idea why these were occurring. And by the time I figured out what had happened, I had to disassemble the entire hot end to clear the jams that had crept all the way up into the extruder gears. Definitely not the experience I wanted to have right out of the box. I at least like to get to know a printer a little first before I have to get real um, invasive like that. Finally, there was also no mention of installing the little purge platform on the side where purged filament will pile up before being ejected. But once we got it all figured out, it was time to get printing. The Cobra 3 Max's print quality is impressive, especially when you consider that bigger everything just means a bigger chance for failure with literally more room for error in variables. Multicolor switching is smooth thanks to the mechanism at which the printer swaps filaments. There's no central switching hub. Uh, each color has its own dedicated PTFE line leading directly into the print head. One thing of note in multicolor printing is just how long it can take. Even on normal sized printers, a fairly straightforward multicolor print can take upwards of a day or even longer, depending on how frequent those color changes are. On a printer like the Max, if you're gonna go full multicolor on an extra large print, you could be sitting there for weeks. I also had initial concerns that the PTFE leads with them being so long, uh, that that would introduce an increased potential for feeding and retracting errors as the filament has that much further to travel. But that's a non-factor because each color change involves drawing back the filament only a small distance from the tool head so that it's removed and then feeding the next one a small distance into the print head. Filament doesn't have to travel all the way back to the Ace Pro on each change. My first multicolor print was a set of these articulated Charizard Pokemon designed by Nine Patch. This was a perfect example of the printer helping my shop efficiency because I can fit two of these on a Bamboo X1C or an A1, but I was able to fit all five of my open orders onto the Cobra 3 Max, and they came out perfectly. Now, the printer's not without its oddities, but I'll say up front that none of them really diminish its value as an oversized workhorse. First, this thing flings filament waste like a rock out of David's sling. And with no provided deflector, it shoots with force across whatever room you have the printer situated in. I mean, it made for a fun little game, I guess, as I placed a waste bin two feet away to catch the poop. A simple print of a deflector, though, solves this issue, but it's so confounding that any cubic would choose to ignore this issue from the factory. A camera is also not built into the printer, but any cubic offers a basic model for post purchase. Oddly, the camera mount has to be printed and it's an included file on the internal storage of the device, but it provides the most useless 
camera angle imaginable. I had to try out a couple of different mounts floating around marketplaces out there to land on one that made sense. The other issues are primarily software based. At this time, you can only use the Cobra 3 Max with Anycubic's next slicing software. While I'm sure that there will be a profile available soon enough for things like Orca Slicer, right now you're locked into Anycubic Next. Now on its own, this is another offshoot of Orca Slicer, so it does have a familiar feel and experience. However, some of the most basic of features seem to be stripped out. For instance, there's no way to control flushing volumes within this slicer. This means that you have no way of trying to optimize waste during color changes. For me, this isn't a huge deal because so far the flushing volumes as auto calculated are netting me perfect prints with no color bleed and that's really all that matters to me. But on a printer this size and with extra large prints, this could become a huge issue fast since waste literally starts to pile up. Now, you can adjust these on the fly mid print using the printer's screen, but that's just inconvenient and doesn't lend itself to really taking adequate time to try and do the math that's often involved in calculating a good flush multiplier. There are also other weird presets like a 0.1 top contact Z distance for supports, which is usually way too strong a bond, and a one millimeter support to object XY distance, which creates too wide of a gap. I fully expect Anycubic to address these little annoyances through updates, but until then, there's a little too much fidgeting that has to occur for each print. But in all, this printer has more than lived up to the hype I gave it. It's been running nonstop, primarily printing Daredevil helmets two at a time as the hype continues around the new series. Apart from the print issues I had at the beginning due to incorrectly installed parts, my confidence in this printer's abilities continues to grow with each new job. So, is the Anycubic Cobra 3 Max for you? Well, if you're looking to print giant multicolor prints, then yes. Or if you have a need to just print volume, then absolutely. The Cobra 3 Max can help maximize your output through a single plate, now in color. If you found this review useful, please like and subscribe, and let me know in the comments whether you'll be picking up your very own Cobra 3 Max combo. Happy printing, y'all.